Hey guys, my name is Donita and welcome to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if this is your very, very first time here, please let me know in the comments below how you found my channel. On this channel, I do clothing hauls, travel vlogs, I do wig reviews, I cater to the lazy wig wear because I don't like putting a lot of work when installing my wigs. And we also talk about some black love on this channel. I decided to create a how to plan affordable wedding series. I still get comments and questions to this day and I was just like, eh. I went back and watched a video and I'm like, this video is garbage. I recorded it back in 2019 when I didn't really have a good camera and I was newer to YouTube and I cringe every time I watch it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so in this series, this is part four. So welcome back if you've made it this far. If you haven't, make sure you guys start from the beginning and work your way down. So far, I talked about the proposal after the proposal, enjoying that moment, soaking it in, creating a budget, location and venue, and the bridal party. In today's video, we're going to talk about guests and invitations, and I'm going to give you some tips on what I did and drop some gems for you. So make sure you guys stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can get reminders every time I post a video. And we gonna be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. So for the save the dates, I saved a lot of money on my save the dates. Um, one of my relatives has had, well, they have a nice camera. Well, I have one too now. But back then they had a really nice camera and my mom came to visit in New Jersey. We went to the beach and we took our save the dates. Aren't they nice you guys? They're so cute. So our save the dates basically had save the date, the location which was in Pittsburgh. It had the, the date and all that good stuff. I saved a lot of money from hiring a photographer this way because I had my mom take the photos. We took a million photos. And if you're a camera person, you know taking a million photos is what it is. And then you find one good one. <laughs> we had a couple, but this was the one we decided to choose. We mailed them out as postcards to everyone. I got them from Vistaprint. Vistaprint had some huge deal going on. I don't know, because it was in the summer. I don't know if it was... Labor Day maybe, maybe that's when I mailed them out in September. I can't remember, but yeah, so we mailed them out and that was our way of announcing to everyone this was our wedding date and this is what we were doing. So you can save money that way. For our invitations, our room minimum for the venue was 100 and that was our maximum. We didn't wanna go over 100. Um, I created my own invitations, you guys. <laughs> I was just feeling so like DIY-ish and I just wanted to do it everything myself. I don't know. I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, here's a picture of what they looked like. Mine were black and gold. I am trying to find a photo because I don't have a copy of my freaking invitation. And I really wanted to see if you know, a relative had it. If not, this is a photo of a fellow YouTuber. And this is where I got the idea from. The link is also gonna be listed below. Having a fancy invitation is a personal choice. A lot of the time people just throw it away. Um, me personally, my relatives, well, my mom, my aunts, my grandmothers, you know, they like to have keepsakes. So I was like, I wanna make this personalized so they can keep it. And I could keep it. Unfortunately, I don't have one. I don't know what happened. Don't ask. <laughs> On the invitations, the so the ceremony started at six. And on the invitations, I said doors open at five and the ceremony started at 5.30. If you are, they are always on CP time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I've been to a few weddings where it started so late and I'm like, what's going on? People were just late, you know? And I'm just like, nah, y'all ain't doing that on my wedding day. So I lied and said the doors open at 5.30 and ceremony started at, no, I lied and said the doors open at five and the ceremony starts at 5.30. When in reality, the doors opened at 5.30 and the ceremony started at six. So yes, I pushed it ahead in a half an hour because I was just like, I. I just don't feel like people are going to arrive on time. It was a 30 to 45 minute drive outside of the downtown city of Pittsburgh. That didn't include people who live, you know, 
past downtown or whatever some people was like an hour drive some people you know i was just like look and it was going to be rush hour six o'clock in the evening um so yeah that's what i did <laughs> proper wedding etiquette is to invite someone and their spouse okay um if they've been if they're married you're supposed to invite them if they're in a long-term relationship you're supposed to invite them as well if it's a new relationship you're not obligated to invite them so that was the method that i chose for picking my people i also had an insert in as well so i had the invitation then i had like a small little insert that said blank out of two are invited that way people couldn't pick and choose like oh i'm going to bring my kids or oh, i'm going to bring this extra person you know um if you've never planned a wedding before or if you just don't have wedding knowledge or etiquette sometimes people think it's okay to do certain things and it's not I know sometimes when people have weddings at halls, usually you can say, oh, I'm going to bring this person with me. But when you're at a venue, it's different because you're paying per person, per for food, chair, cover, all that stuff, you know? So I had blank out of two are invited, you know, that way they can put one or two. They couldn't put three, four, five. That was not happening. Also, one thing I wanted to discuss was do not RSVP for an event you are not going to, especially if they are paying for you to be there. I'm not gonna lie, I had a couple people RSVP and they had no intentions on, on coming. And it was like, it was it was an issue for me, it was an issue. Cause I'm like, I'm paying for you to be here. So just keep in mind, you know, to be considerate with other people's time and you know, time and energy, especially if you're going to a wedding, a baby shower, an event. If they're saying, oh, I need to know so so we can do food. Don't say you're going to go and you have no intentions on going. You know, if you if you do RSVP and you can't make it, let them know. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to throw that out there because apparently a lot of people don't know that. If I'm not planning on going somewhere, I do not RSVP. I don't waste my time. I don't waste my energy. Hey, such and such, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Don't pay for me, you know? That's just, it's not cool, you guys. So I collected my addresses off Postable. If you are not familiar with postable.com, it's an easy way you can collect everyone's addresses. I sent everyone the link via text or email or whatever. Hey, could you fill this out for me? And that was a that was an easy way for me to keep track of everything. Um The older crowd, they, you know, grandparents, they don't they're not familiar with technology. So I just called them up, filled it out myself on their behalf. Um you guys I don't know why some people don't know this I'm not judging but if you move take your butt on the post office website and have them forward your old mail to your new address like the people not know that <laughs> it's a dollar you log on to the post office I'm moving here's my current address and here's my new address <laughs> that way you can have your mail forwarded when I tell you from the time that I mailed out my um, save the dates to the time I was mailing out invitations some people were like oh I didn't get your invitation I'm like and I made my invitation so I, was, I felt the way I had to go back and make another one you know when I printed it out I, I was strategic I put people's names on there I was strategic and I was like so upset I'm like what the fuck like why don't you go to the freaking post office or go on the website and tell them you move so you can get your mail forwarded Ugh, you guys <laughs> I cannot I literally can't but yeah so postable you know you have all your saved entries on there and you can just go in there copy and paste the address print it out write it whatever you need it for you know you can do that we also had a wedding website which was like an extra bonus it wasn't it was just for fun i mean we really didn't need it but it was free i made it on minted.com and it was fun we I, I really 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 liked it this is what the website is looking like we had a little bit a little bio of how we met the proposal um a place for you to enter your name and buy your invitation i don't think i really used this i can't remember we had a q a in there as well you couldn't bring extra guests children were not invited and rsvp was mandatory I had so many issues with people not RSVPing and just thinking they had a spot available. You know, if someone's paying for you to be there, you guys, you must RSVP. 
I also had the parking information on there, which was free. It had the address and map location on there. I also had my bridal party on the website and a little bit of background of them and the flower girls. But for the sake of people's privacy, I will not show them, but I will show you my sister. <laughs> so as far as the wedding registry, because we were in New Jersey and we were in Pittsburgh, well, because we live in New Jersey, we were in Pittsburgh, we did not want to carry a bunch of crap in our car. So I said, you know, we already have an apartment together. It's not, we weren't, it's not like we were buying a house, you know, the American dream style way. We weren't buying a house. So we didn't really need anything. I was just like, well, we can take money, you know? We had a wet wedding registry called Tinder. The website is no longer there. I'm sorry. This was from what, 2015 to 17? You know, I don't know what happened, you guys. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure there's something similar out there. Basically, Tinder was a monetary gift website. So, you know, we would send people the link, this is our web, this is our registry, and they would go in there and give bring, you know, give us money or they had brought cards to the wedding and just gave us money that way too. So that was another way. We was like, "Well, we'll just ask for money." <laughs> One thing I will say is that just respect people's wishes. If they say, here's my registry, get them something that's on the registry. Don't buy them something that you think that they should have or pay for your plate or just give them money, you know? It's just simple as that. I don't know why people are so difficult sometimes, but. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we highlighted some things about the guests and invitations and wedding registries and all that great stuff. Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you get reminders every time I post a video. In next week's video, we're going to talk about the big day, okay? So stay tuned and I will see you guys next week.